2025 marks the centenary of the Ferguson Master Patent. A couple of Ferguson and a Ford Ferguson here to explain a little bit about the centenary and the patent itself. On the 12th of February 1925 at Belfast, Harry Ferguson filed his patent called Apparatus for Coupling Agricultural Implements to Tractors and Automatically Regulating Depth of Work. Today, this is recognised as the actual invention of the modern tractor. No one in history before had thought of the tractor being a mechanised farming solution. They thought of the tractor just to replace the horse and then pull a plough or a cultivator or whatever. But in 1925, after a number of years of research, Harry Ferguson had reached the stage with make the tractor able to, to pull and to control as a unit different implements from ploughs, cultivators, grubbers, dull ploughs or whatever. So in the patent he sets out how it can be achieved. Uh, the first pictures there is chatting about using electric motors and switches to control and raise and lower the implements and also electric motors to drive uh, the tractor forward. So now we're just chatting about an electric tractor a hundred years ago and all of the diagrams there is to do with using a torque reaction, um, hydraulics, and you can also see there it's got a set of disc harrows. So it's not just chatting about ploughs, it's really moving on there to different implements. These pictures to do with using uh, cone clutches to drive from the tractor, and really these are all kind of based on uh, the, the best selling fortune tractor at the time, the fortune model F, and the interesting ones then is to do with hydraulics, and you can see there it's using lower link, so it's using lower link sensing, so no one is there, and an upper link. At this stage it's only just two point linkage, but it's the principle of interchange, quickly interchangeable implements. By 1931, he had decided right, he had perfected how he was going to attach implements to the tractor and he was going to use hydraulics and 1931 to 33 at Belfast in his workshop he had built the Belfast Black prototype tractor. Once it was finished it was taken to Tully Lagan Manor in County Tyrone. Tully Lagan was the home of Thomas McGregor Greer. He was the main financial backer of Harry Ferguson and the Ferguson system and he put up a lot of the £156,000 cost to develop. So a lot of substantial, a lot of money at that time and he had 2,000 acres of land on his estate and it was ideal for doing the testing. So in 33 the tractor was taken there for testing but it quickly became evident it didn't work. Ferguson system of linkage with the lower link sensing that could not get it to work. And over the next two years, it took to 1935, so 90 years ago, the Ferguson system would finally be perfected in County Tyrone. That's why I would always call County Tyrone as the home of the Ferguson system. Uh, something for us in Tyrone here to be very, very proud of. So by 1935, it was perfected and it was ready for production. Just the year earlier, he had made an agreement with David Brown at Huddersfield, and David Brown would build the improved version of the Ferguson Belfast Black Tractor, and it would commence production in 1936. Now we can see a couple of examples, and you can see some of the nice adverts there as well, then with the horse, and then the Ferguson Brown Type A then, the modern tractor. Ferguson Brown sadly would not make mass production through mass production because by 1938 only a little over 700 was built and that wasn't the thousands, the hundreds of thousands Harry Ferguson was really looking for to, to make his system viable. It had to be mass produced and produced at a price that even the poorest farmer could afford. So he would turn 
to Henry Ford. Henry Ford was able to mass produce his mega factories, cars at the lowest possible price. In volume of scale, the more you could produce, the, the cheaper it would be to sell. So he would make an agreement in 1938 with Henry Ford. And you can see the result then was the Ford tractor with the Ferguson system, or the Ford Ferguson, it's Harry Ferguson, and everybody else would call it. Um, a very successful tractor. And I come around to the tractors just in the garden here now. This is a 1944 example of a Ford Ferguson, the world's true mass product Ferguson system tractor. Um, Powered by a Ford side valve engine, three speed transmission, and of course, the important thing at the back here is the three point conversion hydraulic linkage. Two lower links here and here, and the upper control link. As I was saying, so it's got upper link control and then fingertip then to control the actual raising the lower the implements and setting the depth. So, Ford Ferguson. It was a very advanced tractor. Really every tractor today is still based on the technology of this tractor. But sadly it wouldn't be built in Northern Ireland or the United Kingdom as Harry Ferguson had hoped. The war had taken over from that. But by 1945, Harry Ferguson would be back in Northern Ireland. And he had high hopes to get an improved version of the Ford Ferguson into production. With an overhead valve engine and a four speed gearbox and other small changes. July, August, he and the Prime Minister of Northern Ireland, Sir Basil Brookborough, really were confident that production of the improved tractor could be in Northern Ireland. The tractor to be called TE20, Tractor Europe, 20 horsepower, was what it was going to be called. Sadly, when the new Prime Minister came in of the United Kingdom at the end of July, things started to change. And really by September it was clear production wasn't going to be in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland certainly could have built the tractor. When you think of the amount of planes, tanks, and other equipment, ships, Northern Ireland built, there's no reason it was feasible to do it. It was just getting the materials released to allow it by the UK government. Uh, and sadly they wouldn't allow that. So production instead was going to be in England and Harry Ferguson in October would sign an agreement with Sir John Black of the Standard Motor Company and the result would be the TE20 tractor England 20 horsepower and the first examples would appear in 1930, 1946. And this is an example here, only 315 would be built in 46, the first year of production. Um, the first one was 6th of July. 46, uh, powered by a Continental overhead valve engine, four cylinder again, uh, four speed gearbox this time, small changes to the brakes, layout of the brakes, and again, normal Ferguson system, but again, small changes to the mounting points at the top, beside the top link, to allow for more implements to be attached. Um, the TE20 would be another very successful tractor. The Ford Ferguson, over 306,000, would be built by the time production ended. And by the time production ended of the TE20 in 1956, over half a million would be built. And that really did, these two tractors really did establish the Ferguson system.